What's up, guys? Blacklisted Voice here for episode number 10. We're here with Matt and Logan as we kind of chat about um, five episodes ago. We're trying to do every five, just get the coaches together and uh, do, a, do a podcast, chat about some topics. Uh, the topic this week is things that we have learned from COVID, um, whether it be coaching or just from our athletes or life in general. Um, Netflix, when press, can actually make decent movies, shockingly. Uh, so... Uh, Matt just kind of wanted to chat a little bit about what he kind of learned um, programming. He was pretty involved in group classes and Zoom classes. Um, so he just kind of wanted to chat a little bit about what um, he learned from like a programming side of those classes. So, and Matt's, you're with Offshore CrossFit or I yeah. guess Offshore Athletics. Athletics now. now, but yeah. 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 How did you guys like COVID experience go? Uh, so Right after St. Patrick's Day, uh, we made the call to to shut down the gym and move to, to Zoom classes. And uh, like the next day, the state shut down all the gyms. Um, so I've uh, I've been coaching all the classes three times a day, and like okay, uh, at home workouts. So like there's there's always been like the travel workouts and all that jazz for for a while now. But uh, what happens when that actually becomes the training program rather than just like, okay, I need to, I need to move around while I'm on vacation or uh, on a business trip. And what happens when that becomes how how you stay fit. And uh, so the confines of like trying to do it in front of a camera. So so like selecting the movements and how you're piecing the movements together and the movements, it just the the restrictions there. And also, um, Another thing is the longer this went, the more it was like, okay, well, we can't just do a hundred air squats every single day because everybody's going to end up with tendonitis. All right. Yeah. How do we try and start emulating some form of strength training? How do we make sure we're working on this quality and this quality and um, a lot of midline work, obviously, but uh, tempo became a very, very useful tool as to how to, make those lighter weights feel a little bit heavier to try and get a little bit of strength training in as well as in addition to tempo work, uh, ballistic work and just trying to do like jump squats to, okay, let's try and emulate being that, that explosiveness and that ballistic aspect. Obviously uh, it's not the perfect emulator by any means, but at least we're trying to do our best, the best that we can to train the, the qualities of, of the absolute strength of the endurance of the, of the fast twitch of the, um, all of that. So just trying to figure out how to blend that in and make it work in, okay, you have a backpack. That's the only equipment you have. So just, uh, just, it, it really stretched me create, um, creatively yeah. to be able to, uh, to provide to where I'm like, cause like, uh, like I just said, like, I don't want to give everybody tendonitis. <laughs> right, right, right. What was like the nastiest thing you've done? for like tempo squats and um, anything or like stuff like that over the quarantine? Uh, uh, so, so, so another aspect of it too is uh, because you're doing this in Zoom call, like you can't be like, okay, we're going to do like uh, for time became a little um, is difficult because everybody's going to end up in different places. Yeah. So it became a lot of EMOM like things. So like okay. it was uh, like it, there, there were a few weeks where it was like, all right, we're going to do 10 tempo squats of three seconds on the way down and two seconds at the bottom and two seconds on the way up. And we're going to go every 90 seconds. And it was a, it was a super set. There was some pulling in there, but like you're working for like 45, 50 seconds. You get a 30 second break and now you're doing tempo row work. So it was, yeah. and uh, no matter what it looks like on paper, like, Everybody was left afterwards. Like, if you turn that when you turn that speaker on, uh, everybody's out of breath. Like, everybody's <laughs> working hard. So, like, they're still they're still getting a chance to work on their. their they're getting healthy. Yeah. And maintaining that health. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Logan, did you give anybody like some weird tempo stuff at all, or? Yeah, I gave. Um, yeah, I gave out some pretty nasty tempo stuff. Like, it was like five sets, sixty minute AMRAP of like. Uh, push-ups with a three-second negative, three-second pause at the bottom. Uh, I had some, I had some good like 
jump squat and jumping lunges like supersets and EMOMs. Um, yeah, some really got to be uh, pretty creative. And even with like some people just had like plates and a barbell, like, yeah. I mean, literally just doing, you know, barbell thrusters, barbell rows, you know, floor press with a barbell. Like, yeah, you got to do a little bit more reps and then tempo and it's, it's not <laughs> quite as fun, but like yeah. still got some pretty good, pretty good work. Um, for a lot of the, luckily I didn't really have too many clients that were severely limited. Most yeah. people actually had a barbell. Um, so that was a pretty, pretty nice thing to have. For sure. Yeah. I'm kind of excited to see, uh, cause like a lot of times in training, you end up, you know, just pushing the tempo quite a bit, um, especially with where we were in the season, like <clears throat> functionals was still, you know, ramp, uh, ramping up. And I think like from a gym programming standpoint, like, your programming might get influenced by that a little bit um, uh, just from like the CrossFit season. Uh, maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> just thought, but uh, yeah. I'm, one thing that like I took away was like how important GPP is and like making people do strict pull-ups in a pull-up bar inside of a door frame for, you know, a hundred plus reps. And now all of a sudden they got great upper body pulling volume and, um, one person had voodoo floss bands and dumbbells. So they did just stupid amounts of occluded squats. And now we get to see what that's going to end yeah. up happening for their wall balls and their, um, their squatting in general, once they, once they can get under a barbell again. So that was like one thing that I took away is like, just how important, like the base building for fitness is. And I think a lot of people end up skipping that and just jumping right into CrossFit a little bit too soon and they don't build you know 100 strict pull-ups in a session 200 push-ups in a session with you know correct form and then putting a weight vest on or you know knee to elbow sit-ups and all this like a lot of stuff that I had done in the military prior to coming into CrossFit and like it lays like a crazy big base for for like fitness in general if that makes sense but yeah I, were you guys <laughs> like giving your given a lot of like just gymnastics body weight stuff to your clients or I really I really tried to um like I was really cautious about just like giving clients like just a bunch of like CrossFit stuff yeah. um just because I know that you know we've been in this for you know two months and I know personally like especially if you're a little bit older and you've been a CrossFit athlete or just in CrossFit in the fitness space for a while, there's only like so much intense intensity um, that you can really elicit on a daily basis in your house. Um, so I kind of took that as, okay, like I might, you know, with limited equipment, we might not be able to actually get too much better at just like maybe Metcons, but, you know, really using this time for a time of, like you said, base building and, okay, here's the things that we can do and here are the things that are um, that are pr a lot easier to do at your house. So, like, if they had, like, a set of barbells – or, sorry, a set of plates and a barbell, uh, then we were doing tempo work, working on Olympic lifts, working on positioning, um, just like, you know, um, just, you know, brute strength – um, just running, just rowing. And like, for me personally, um, you know, I, I find it a lot, I, I, for whatever reason, I don't know why I find it a lot easier, um, to, you know, if you're doing aerobic work when you're doing it by yourself to be on a machine, um, or something cyclical, uh, maybe because it's like one of those things that no matter what, you're always on it by yourself. So like, unlike a Metcon, you could have people with you. Um, yeah. So I gave a lot of my clients that, you know, just some time to really get on the machines um, and build a good base. Um, and yeah, that was probably a big takeaway is really just like knowing the situation and being real with it. Like understanding that like, yeah, like you still can go hard at your house and in your living room and stuff, but it's a lot harder. And yeah. especially with coaching clients, you're going to have way more potential to burn them out to where after COVID they're like, you know what, man, like going to the gym, you know, they might go back for a few weeks or whatever, but then they're like, man, this just isn't really that fun. Um, yeah. So that's what I kind of worried about. And I mean, you know, all my clients seem, you know, pretty happy at the moment um, and made some like pretty, some pretty good gains as far as just like basic, you know, strength and aerobic, yeah. um, you know, power and capacity, whatever we were working on. Um, yeah. Yeah, just being really realistic with the tools that 
um, you know, they have and not making them do like, you know, they got a barbell and a jump rope, not making them do, you know, something with a barbell, a jump rope and burpees every other day, you know? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Yeah. 17.5. <laughs> you should do 17.5 until uh, you can't do it anymore. Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> 60 minute MRAP of 17.5. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> or do uh, 17.5 into 17.5 game standards at the heavier weight. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> that would be brutal <laughs> or how about something like the that that workout i just sent you the uh the 10 minute amrap of single arm d uh oh, devil's oh, press yeah. <laughs> man yeah. how fun with your back with that one <laughs> that's uh <laughs> that's a community standard or uh, a community competition program <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah matt but yeah i um, i almost did that one today I just want to see. Like, <laughs> yeah, just curious. The, the single arm devil's press is a lot better than the du double. You can oh, actually yeah. oh. create a neutral spine there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're just I, – I always tell people, like, when you're at your gym, like, respect the dumbbells. But, like, when you go to a competition, like, fuck those things. Just slam yeah. them on the ground. <laughs> like, disrespect those dumbbells. And then you don't even have to worry about your back because you're not taking any tension going to the ground. <laughs> you, you told me that right before we had a, comp or a competition with Devil's Press, and I did it, and it worked really well. And, like, the next heat after me, they are like, please control the dumbbells all the way down. We want to bring them home in one piece. <laughs> <laughs> like worst case scenario your dumbbell breaks and now you have 25 pounds of the head that you're bringing up yeah <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> should have brought uh better dumbbells <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like you had to have known this is gonna happen like yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> matt did you see any like um kind of burnout inside of your clients in zoom classes at all or was it um um i i would say after so they, uh, initially it started off a little bit low and then the word got out and it spiked and then uh, it's, it, it's dropped down a little bit since then, but uh, it's been holding pretty steady um, for the past three, four weeks, I would say. Yeah. So are you like having conversations with some of these like athletes at your gym or Logan, like what are some of the conversations that you're having? Like, what are you kind of telling people to keep their interest and pique their interest and stay focused during this, during this time frame? I, uh, in the Zoom classes, I always try and bring it back to like, uh, how this is going to pay out for them when they get back. Like today there, there's bent over rows in the workout and I'm emphasizing on like driving those levels as far back as they can do like, all right, this is going to translate to those chest bars. So you're going to come back and you see crushing chest bars. So just trying to relate it as much as possible to the things that they want. The things, yeah. the, the sexy things of CrossFit. Try, <laughs> try, and, try and relate it as much as possible so that they, and I mean, they get their, they're, they're ending the workouts with their asses kicked. So like they get that, they get that like, all right, I'm, I'm definitely doing something useful with my time feeling too. Totally. Yeah. 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 What have you? Uh, ass, is, ass is kicked in quotation. Yeah. As much uh, as with, with like um, I I tried out the uh, the idea, and we're gonna keep running with it. Is uh, we're doing intervals, uh, aerobic, cyclical intervals. So like, if uh, if you can measure out like 200 meters from your sidewalk, put your phone on on your sidewalk and just run run back and forth on the street, or bike rower, whatever you have, and uh, that like I was like this might crash and burn. I have no idea how this workout's gonna go, but uh, everybody ends up loving it because it's been like I get to get outside. I get to I get to do things, um, which which is tough with the with the Zoom classes. Um, yeah. And yeah, it's like all right, you're doing 12 sets every two minutes of a 200 meter run. Your goal is to keep those times as close as possible. Yeah. And yeah. And some knock it out of the park. Some uh, some are still chasing that high of just like I'm going to crash and burn but uh, overall it's been pretty good yeah I feel like there's a Ricky Bobby quote in there somewhere <laughs> <laughs> but 
That's awesome. Um, what about uh, some of your individual clients? Because um, I know Braden was, uh, sorry for mentioning your name, Braden, but uh, Braden was off of school and you had, you had said that he like absolutely destroyed some workouts. Um, it seemed yeah. like I had chatted with him too. It seemed like he had a really good mindset towards training. Um, he, has a, he has a fantastic mindset in, in general and uh, he's, he's adapted pretty well to being at home. Um, he was stuck without a squat rack for a while. Um, and then he got one and, um, it's just, he understands the purpose of training and doesn't like try to kill himself in the train. He yeah. goes, this is, this is, tra- this training is to get me better. I'm trying to build an adaptation here. So, um, I'm going to do, do try and hit whatever the goal for that session is. And, uh, yeah. He's crushed some things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Congrats. Uh, he, he had a 50, 50 deadlifts at 315 PR and a 2K PR. So congrats on those, Braden. <laughs> Heck yeah. Uh, Heck yeah. Uh, Logan, what, like, what, uh, um, you know, because Ka- uh, Carrie has been on the podcast. She's one of um, Logan's clients, and uh, she was going to the games until they announced, like, the um, that the national champions are not going to the games. So, like, what was kind of her mindset throughout all this and like building up into, um, you know, training for this? Uh, Cause she's also fortunate. It seems like she has a gym to train at. So what was her kind of mindset building up into this and working through this? And then kind of when the announcement happened, what were, what were some of the, like the conversations you guys had? Um, so she honestly had a, a really great mindset um, moving forward. Um, you know, I think she kind of, she kind of knew that, there was a possibility that the games, you know, were going to get canceled. And then, you know, they said they're going to have it at Aromas. And then they ultimately said that, you know, it's only going to be 30 people. So it was really back and forth. Um, But honestly, like she probably had like once, you know, the whole like, um, you know, COVID lockdown thing started, she probably had like, some of her like I would say her best training cycle so like it didn't really affect her too much and you know she's um she's got a great support system and she's got a great training partner so she was like she was you know I got to train with her a couple times and Mm -hmm. every time that I went down there to train with her it seemed like she was getting better um so yeah she had been a great outlook on stuff um you know super positive um and you know kind of already dealt with the fact that okay you know if um, you know, if I can do this, if I did it last year, I can do it again, you know, as, qual- as yeah. far as qualifying for the games. Um, but then like after it was like official, um, you know, it was, I think it was, it was definitely pretty hard on her, you for know, sure. and she said that, you know, it feels a lot different, um, than I thought it would, you know, it's like, she just said she was devastated and I feel for her, you know, yeah. I, you know, I didn't qualify for the games, but you know, I, um, you know, I was a little bit in the same boat. I kind of, it was like the first year of CrossFit that pretty much everything that I had set out to do at the start of the year was lined up, you know, yeah. and that's yeah. the same thing for her. It was lined up and then it got taken away. Um, so I think that was really hard. I mean, she had had several years of uh, like being super close to making regionals. And then the last year she makes it and then she goes team. And then the next year they say no more regionals. And then the first time she qualifies for the games, it gets taken away. So it's like, man, (laughs) yeah. but like, you know, I think an important thing that I had really been trying to do with clients and especially her is really just like empathizing on the situation and not just being like, okay, like, you know, you're going to get better from this and there's always next year. Cause like no one wants to hear that, you know, cause yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it really comes across as just kind of fake. Yeah. Um, and it, and like a lot of people, you know, I think when someone's dealing with something super hard that, you know, they try to be like, you know, I know what you're going through, blah, blah, blah. But the truth is like, no one really knows actually what you're feeling. So I really tried to be, you know, super, you know, empathetic and, you know, like, I know that, you know, you're going through this and it's okay to like be sad about it. You know, if, if yeah. it, you know, if it wasn't that it, it, if you weren't sad about it, then it wouldn't be that important to you, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, and I think just having the conversation of, you know, this is going to be hard to get through, but, you know, just letting her know that, you know, you are, you've gotten so much better and, um, 
you know, you have a, a such a, you know, bright future and many years of competing left. And uh, there's going to be people that you're competing against that this is going to rock, you know? Yep. And there, I, I mean, there are, there's going to be people that probably don't compete anymore. I mean, there's yeah. going to be people that'd be like, I'm yeah. done, you yeah. know? And I mean, easily it's, it's understandable. Cause like, I mean, I can imagine, you know, the people that, yeah, I couldn't imagine it. And so, you know, I just let her know that, you know, it's, it's going to be tough to get through, but you know, I know that she has, you know, the ability to get through it. And, you know, although she kind of had, you know, a little bit of self doubt, like, Oh, what if the workouts are, um, you know, not as good as last year. And, you know, I just kind of reassured her that, you know, she's gotten so much better at all her weaknesses. It probably won't even be close. Um, but yeah, I mean, just really being empathetic and not being like, all right, you know, Monday it starts again, you know, yeah. back on the rower. Um, you know, so I think just like, uh, right after it happened, um, you know, I kind of wrote her like a whole week of just like, you know, 90 minute, two hour sessions and literally just gave her like everything she's good at, you know, yeah. um, no machine work, no aerobic work, just stuff that she could have fun with. Um, and I think, I mean, it seemed like it went pretty well. Um, yeah. but yeah, just, I think just being patient and just waiting, um, waiting for them to kind of be like, all right, I'm ready. Let's go. Um, yeah. and I think just having, you know, um, you know, having myself and then her training partner, James and her husband, Michael, to kind of support her along the way, um, you know, definitely really helps. Um, sure. she's got a lot of people, good people in her corner, but yeah, I mean, just kind of, you know, really learned that, you know, sometimes the best thing is to just kind of empathize with them and just be like, all right, let's, you know, we're good through this. We'll take a couple steps back and, you know, get, we'll get rolling eventually, but, you know, don't stress about it now. Um, just kind of give yourself a little bit of time to kind of deal with this. Cause like, if you don't really deal with it completely and then you just kind of roll into training, then I mean, you're six months down the road or like right before the open, you're like, you know what? Like, I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah, you know yeah. so yeah I think I mean honestly like I was really happy with um how she responded she showed um like a lot of grit and I think a lot of younger athletes can look up to her and be like sure. all right like sometimes stuff isn't going to go my way and sometimes it's not going to go my way for a long time yeah yeah um, but you know you just got to find love in the process and yeah, trust yeah. that eventually it'll pay off you know yeah. Yeah, there's a, a good book out right now by Simon Sinek called The Infinite Game. Um, and it basically talks about how, um, you know, businesses that are very finite and focus on the moment or winning or, you know, even sports in general, just focusing on winning and not understanding that, uh, you know, your career, like for an athlete or your business, like is it, the goal is to have it continue well after you step away from it. And so, um, you know, as an athlete, I think that's a great mindset to start to develop is like, just because you've accomplished something in this season doesn't mean it's going to happen next season. And you have to continue to develop that thought process towards the future, towards the future, towards the future, towards the future, and just continue to kind of figure out, um, you know, how you want to, or how do you think about your sport and how you want to, you know, perceive or continue doing that sport for an extended period of time. So, yeah um carrie definitely has that i mean she's been freaking rocked by a lot <laughs> yeah so it's, kind of yeah. A, it's kind of cool to watch that mindset come out so yeah but yeah uh, definitely I, I think too like um people think that feelings are bad inside of sport and yeah. feelings are just they're normal like i can't yeah. remember who said it but uh they said at one point in time i can't remember who this was but it was you know if you're if you don't feel bad or have negative emotions towards a sh like a shitty situation that's not normal you know yeah. like <laughs> yeah 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 you should have those emotions and if you're just like happy go lucky all the time and like just robotic like you're probably a sociopath and there's something wrong with you, you know? <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah listen that's yeah. You, maybe see a therapist or something <laughs> yeah yeah but, definitely yeah it's uh yeah carrie's got a pretty good mindset towards that and definitely something to to look after for sure so yeah and, and i think the biggest thing that i've probably um that i've learned from just as coaching is being yeah. like 
there definitely is such a thing being almost overly positive and to where it comes across as fake, you know? Yeah. Um, and I think you can, you need to be positive, but you also need to be real with the situation. Mm -hmm. um, and just knowing you're dealing with a person that's going through something yeah. and, you know, you, the answer is not always like, Oh, you got this, you know? Yeah. yeah. It's I, just not. So <laughs> yeah. I, I typically like asking questions and trying to understand which yeah. kind of what, what we did was we yeah. just like asked a lot of questions and got you to like, think about it a little bit more and like, you know, rationalize why you were feeling this way. Um, or like, yeah. maybe not rationalize, but bring it to the forefront of why, why yeah. you're feeling that way. Cause I think once you understand why you're feeling that way, you can start to cope a little bit better. Um, yeah. like the support system is great, but ultimately, like, if you want to continue in the sport, the decision's up to you and you have to yeah. figure it out for yourself. So like, yeah, uh, getting yourself to understand why you're feeling that way or why you have these emotions is, um, I think pretty, pretty important. And, and like, from a coaching perspective, I think it's important for you to like bring that out from the athlete. So yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, yeah sick <laughs> yeah and i i also uh you know i had uh some other clients that had been like um you know trying to do qualifiers and stuff like that and yeah. i would actually had you know one of my clients he had i mean he's gotten a ton stronger um a lot better at his weaknesses and he's just like in a rough state because he's like man i i like i don't even know when the next competition is like i'm doing all this training and like i don't even know when I'm going to be able to like actually see it to fruition. Right. Um, and that's, it's, I mean, it's just a weird situation. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, but I mean, I just think, you know, being luckily it's a younger client. Um, yeah. So he's still kind of up and coming. So he has a little bit more, you know, room to not just like throw in the towel or get burnt out. Um, Cause he's still. Oh, Matt, are you there? Yeah. Oh, okay. Logan just froze. <laughs> but yeah, Logan's client is uh is definitely a little bit younger, so he's got some years ahead of him. Definitely, it's tough to. I don't know, Matt. When you were when you were younger, like this is this was me, but like everything seemed very in the moment, and sometimes it almost seems like the younger generation has a harder time dealing with these influxes and these changes than an older individual. I don't know if you'd agree with that or not. Um, I, like, when I got into competing, like, I, I was like, nothing's gonna mess, like, I, I was focused on, like, a year and a half, I want to go to regional, so, like, every decision that I made for that time period was regionals driven, so, like, I, I don't think I did a competition, because I was like, no, I gotta do base building, I gotta do this, I gotta, like, yeah. I gotta make sure I get the big picture stuff, so I, but I'm also a little weird, so I, uh, uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm in the same boat too. I was like, there's two competitions a year. There's team regionals. And if we make the games, there's team games. <laughs> so like, I think I did one other, maybe one other competition, but uh, yeah, it just seems like with uh, like taking, looking at like big client approach, it, it seems like individuals nowadays are a little bit more focused kind of in the moment um, and like in the, in the training day and in, I was definitely focused in the training day as well. Like if I had a bad training day, I'd break water bottles like an yes, asshole. Yes, <laughs> But <laughs> oh yeah, I I would I would kill myself in training. Yeah, yeah. And like like the idea of like I don't know, I'm I'm not feeling that great today. Okay, I can just do a lower percentage, lower effort, and just get some good work in. Um, I definitely did not have that maturity. <laughs> nope. I was like, I feel like shit. Fuck everything screw the world <laughs> fuck this I feel like shit. i'm supposed to do uh 15 triples on the back spot of 90 percent all right let's do it <laughs> <laughs> yep fail on rep two of the first set and you're like oh man the anger <laughs> but definitely I, I had a squat session that took me an hour and 40 minutes because i was that stubborn oh wow that's impressive I would just break something and walk away. <laughs> so you're, you're definitely a lot different than I am. <laughs> but definitely it's, it's kind of cool to have experienced that stuff though, because now it's a lot easier to explain to clients that like, look, 
you're going to, you may have this bad session and maybe you, maybe you were, you know, or help them learn like, Hey, let's just back it off this session, get some work in. If it just needs to be a movement yeah. session, make it a movement session. Whereas like, uh, I think when you and I were coming up in the sport, like it was like, man, if you got to grind your head into a wall and like, you got to push hard. So but like, yeah, well, yeah. having the, like, it, and, so, and, and it's, a, it's a continual conversation of like, I know that was written on the piece of paper, but like, yeah, you, it, 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 it's tough. It really is tough to just be like, all right, did I not warm up well? Or like, am I just, is this, is this where I'm at today? And yeah. just to, yeah. just to be like, to, to have the maturity to be like, all right, I'm going to tweak my prescription or yeah. I'm just going to do a 60 minute EMOM of easy aerobic work and animal crawls to just get some blood flowing and get my recovery process so that I can start doing stuff again tomorrow or, yeah. and, and sometimes tomorrow is a few days away. Yep. But um, yeah, the, learning that maturity and being able to exercise that maturity is tough. Yeah. 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 It definitely helps having been through it yourself though, and being able to yeah. kind of relate that to the, to the athlete for sure. But like as an athlete, you do want to, and you do need to push yourself to those limits to the point of like, well, this training session sucks because I went hard all week, and and like, but also understanding that just because it's written on paper doesn't mean it's a perfect prescription for you. Like our job as a coach is to push you to your limits and to push you past where you're comfortable going. So we're yeah. going to give you some hard shit sometimes. Welcome back, Logan. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we're going to give you some hard shit sometimes. And like, it might look cool on paper, but uh, it might not, um, it might not be what's in the cards for, for that day. So. Yeah. And in a lot of sessions, like, yeah, you don't want to find out where that line is. Like yeah. we want to do some maximal work to develop those adaptations, but like, right. um, I think Jason Kleep has said it, it was like, sometimes you got to find out where the wheels come off. Yeah, like, exactly. You, you, need to, you need to know where that line is so that you know how hard you can push and, um, and what really is a 90% effort. Yeah. So, yeah. And what one thing too, like, so one thing I, I've started to learn a little bit more in this is like how important um, low intensity CrossFit is at like yeah. 85 and below percent and how important volume is um for crossfit so like yeah uh i've been doing stuff per like this is personally um i've been doing stuff where it's like every minute on the minute um like six chest to bar pull-ups or something like that and then i'll just go sit on a c2 bike for the remainder of the minute and that's actually improved my capacity for upper body pulling and my upper body pulling drastically uh, as well as improved my aerobic system. So mm -hmm. um, like that was one thing that was like a huge eye opener for me. Cause back in the day I would just been like, Oh, 60 chest bar full for time. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. But then like you, you develop that capacity and to Jason Kalipa's point, like you got to find out where the wheels fall off at some point in time. Yeah. 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 You're, you're not going to be the best uh, best athlete you can be if you're only doing uh, six chest of our pull-ups every uh, minute and doing oh, easy aerobic work. Uh, yeah, I was proud of that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that was a big uh, step for me. <laughs> <laughs> funny, uh, funny thing is, is like, so I'm rehabbing my ankle, and like that's that's how I'm rehabbing myself. Like I'm doing, like I'm picking a gymnastics movement, and like I'm just doing easy aerobic intervals with that gymnastics movement, and just like. With the, with the mentality of doing that movement of like, okay, I know how it feels to be aerobic on the machine. How aerobic can I make this pull up or this handstand push up? Like, how little tension do I need to create to where I can keep my same breathing pattern? Yeah. Which for 230 pound guys is extremely difficult. Extremely difficult. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But that's, I think that's one thing, especially with powerful athletes that gets missed out on is like minimal muscle fiber contractions for everything. Yeah. Like you see people just freaking ripping 95 pound snatches and you're like, ah, oh, you can move that a little bit smoother. Like you don't have yeah. to rip it off the ground. Like, yeah. Uh, 
And I think the same, I mean, it's the same thing with gymnastics, but obviously the more body weight, the more muscle fiber. You can yeah. Track. Or <laughs> just like totally relaxing on the eccentric part, you know, yeah. like so many people, like, especially with like power, light power snatches, like they're still so freaking tense on the way down, you yeah. know? And that's yeah. something that we worked on for a while is like literally, obviously this is like competition because you will blow up your back, but literally let the bar take you down with it, you know? Yeah. Don't yep. follow it down, you know? Yeah. And yeah. especially with like strict handstand pushups, like, yeah, you probably don't want to slam your neck into the, into the pad, but if you're in a competition, like, <laughs> you, 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 you gotta go hard. <laughs> <laughs> They got a lot of padding on those regional mats. Yeah, uh, you'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, just uh, just uh, use that strategy. A lot of flus when you have them doing them on a plywood board on the barge. Oh, oh they, gosh. I, I mean, I remember that workout. It was on a plywood board. Yeah, yeah. It was a pl you, you you get on the barge, and uh, if you weren't there for the safety briefing because it was too early, you just sliced up your foot, so you got blood running down your leg while you're upside down. Oh my gosh! Jumping into the ocean, <laughs> and it's a plywood board. <laughs> <laughs> that's sweet <laughs> yeah and the best part is you have volunteers like cheering you on and you're like on 230 pounds on a plywood board like <laughs> no, no it's not that. happening <laughs> on a barge that's going up and down so i have to time the waves right to get the boost <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome yeah, Wadapalooza was wild back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> that was the same year that it rained too, right? Yeah, that was, was it, that. They, there was like a thunderstorm going on, and you were just doing snatches and burpees like in an inch of water. <laughs> I'm all about that. That's sweet. was that was that the same year they had like like what like 20 foot long muscle muscle up ring uh, straps? They've been long almost every year. Well, there was one year when they, they put them all the way up to where they attached, like, the ropes. Oh, and then they threw they, chains. They, they were on Bayside, and, like, people had to yeah. have hooks and grab the, <laughs> the rings and pull them over. Yeah, so that was in – I think that was in 2016. And they're yeah. like, you can't have them blowing in the wind, so let's just put chains in them. And then, granted, we could be butchering this. I don't know the fucking backstory to this. But there was chains in them the next year. And it was almost acted like a spring. So, like, you, when you turned over, <laughs> you didn't have any tension to press out of your yeah. muscle. It was it's still, scary. like, bending up. <laughs> yeah. You almost had to turn over, wait until you felt it spring back into the bottom, and then press out of your muscle up. And, like – There were a lot of people that fell through because yeah, of that. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Crazy. <laughs> um, but, yeah, yeah. Did anyone, did, did anyone put anyone through, like, a pretty good running program? through um covid i was i mean i did like a little bit of more uh uh like maintenance but i did like i worked with a guy that's trying to he's like 10 minutes away from qualifying for his uh, uh the marathon in boston the boston marathon yeah. and uh so yeah i mean i just continued with him um you know really the only person that um that like you know really needed a running progression was in minnesota so it was like cold every day so yeah. <laughs> that was a struggle <laughs> that's where, matt that's where a majority of your clients are too right yeah yeah well i guess there was no okay <laughs> i just can't like i can't it's it sucks because like i just can't like i can't even relate to that i'm like it's... yeah i've never ran when it's that cold <laughs> How, yeah. Did you ever run out in the cold in Ohio, Matt? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I I remember uh, it was like – it was February, and there were like 12 inches of snow on the ground, and we were like, it's like 40 degrees. Let's go out for a run. And, like, it was just like when you – on that run is like – and we had to run through a yard of oh, – we had to run through that snow to get to, the, to our running uh, track along the street. So it was just like you're just like leaping from one foothold to the next foothold. <laughs> <laughs> trying to make it into the into the, the person in front of you's foot holes. <laughs> oh yeah. So you didn't get snow in your shoes and then it melts on the run, you got wet socks now. Oh man. Uh it, it melts when you get inside. Oh. Uh yeah. It was uh yeah. <laughs> 
I remember one time in the spring, it was like 40 degrees outside. So we decided to like assault bike outside because the sun was out. <laughs> and we were like in shorts and t-shirts assault biking outside in 40 degrees. Just oh, yeah. <laughs> but well, 40 degrees in colder climate states means a lot different than 40 degrees everywhere else. Yeah. I can't feel that. Yeah. I have to ask a meteorologist on that because I have no idea. But... Um, and I promise you, I will not be out in 40 degrees in short. I'm going to be bundled up if it's 40 degrees here. <laughs> yeah, 100%. 100%. I think you just get acclimatized to like zero degree weather too. But I don't know. Yeah. Uh, do you guys have any other kind of like learning points from, from COVID? Or do you guys learn any or like read anything or anything cool during uh, during the quarantine? I think for me, just a big thing that I learned is just how important like human interaction is with just yeah. like our sanity of just like day to day life and just like how much we need it to just like feel, you know, fulfilled and um, just how it kind of like, you know, makes our uh, like every aspect of our life, look, you know, better, um, even yeah. things that you didn't necessarily think um it, it impacted too much you know like someone like me I train by myself you know almost all the time but then there are some times where I do train with people or at least being around people and just like having that connection just like totally off just like really threw me uh through a loop and you know it was just you know it's just crazy that you know we need that um we need that so much and uh yeah that was just you know that was super um really learned a lot from that. Um, and, you know, I would say how, you know, like when this first, um, when this first came out, it was like, Oh, it's going to be nice. Like being at home all day and stuff like that. But like after a week, it's just like, you need, you need work and you need like yeah. to yeah. that feeling of staying busy. And, yeah. um, you know, I told you, it feels like, like if you took like your favorite, like, food and ate it like every single day it probably wouldn't be that much enjoyable by like day seven you know yeah. and like that's how kind of I felt with the whole like COVID thing it's like chilling at home you know not having to go into work is nice for like a week and then it's like oh my gosh I'm so I'm so bored and need that just like human connection yeah for sure do you feel it's more human connection or you just weren't feeling fulfilled like sitting at home does that make sense yeah may I, I would say fulfilled yeah fulfilled yeah. being at home all the time because obviously you can work and probably interact with people through work so it's more it yeah was more the like fulfilled yeah there was like no like on a daily basis where it's like you know i you know don't really go into work and train people the clients that i do have they're also at home and it's kind of like a weird time um and yeah it was just it was just weird. It was just like a, it was just like a time of just being like neutral and that just sucks to be in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like literally it was like, everything was just froze. Like, right yeah. as, as it started. so like, what were some of the like coping strategies that you developed for that then? I mean, I, I think for me, um, I would say just really focusing on the things that I could control and the things that um, I was really able to, um, you know, approve, improve upon during this time and, you know, really, really practicing like a lot of gratitude on the situation. And, you know, like a lot of people are, you know, a lot more, you know, worse off than I am. And, um, you know, but then at the same time, realizing that it is a hard situation, like just because there's mm -hmm. people like worse off than me, doesn't make it really any less better. Um, but yeah, I mean, I would just say, you know, I really spent a lot of time and, um, you know, getting, you know, having more one-on-one uh, -on -one connection with my clients and, yeah. uh, you know, really having, you know, doing a lot of, um, you know, progression work as far as like really um, spending a ton of time on each client, going back and looking at. Oh, Logan's gone again. Dang. Um <laughs> But uh, so, so so I can offer another perspective with that. Um, so like I first week of quarantine, um, I broke my ankle. Yeah. Uh, sorry, 
I, I had a fibula fracture and I, I was laid up. So like I couldn't go to the store. Like I, I was for five weeks. The only thing outside of the, like the only time I had gotten in the car was to go to the hospital. Um, at home order very seriously. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So there, yeah, there's a stay at home and then there's like isolation, which is what <laughs> I was basically doing. And, uh, like I, during that time, like I, I did two and a half certs. I'm finishing up that second cert right now. Like, um, I did some other coursework. So like I was, um, and I was still coaching three zoom classes every yeah. weekday. So like I was, I was still very busy coaching. I was like doing extra work that I could for like, uh, certs and stuff and learning. Um, and holy crap, did I miss just seeing another human being? Just yeah. like, yeah, like, I, I mean, I, I would see him virtually, but like that human and social component, holy crap. Yeah, it's crazy how social of a species we are, like, yeah, and how much it yeah. is needed. And I'm, I'm like naturally an introvert. And for me to like come out and be like, <laughs> I need people. Yeah. <laughs> the world has literally flipped on, on top of itself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah. That, yeah, that was, that was really, I, so I, that, yeah. <laughs> you, you can, re, you can definitely relate to that a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think it's more to it than just the ful fulfillment, but uh, definitely that, that social component. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Um, just like with people in general, like, like when I was in the military, like we would always like go into the field and um, like you would basically like, I mean, you were, you were doing your job for, you know, 72 plus hours straight. And then like you had interaction inside your team, but you know, a lot of that was, you were, you know, going and looking at stuff and, you know you didn't you didn't really talk much um so it's uh it was it was interesting coming back to reality and being like man I can like order some food or like I can you know call some people and chat with them and go and hang out in person like it was it was you realized how much you took for granted um and so it'll be interesting to see when things start returning back to normal uh, sorry, Cap, uh, to finish that point is you realized how much you took for granted, but over time, like once you started living in society again, like that novelty kind of wore off and you, you start to kind of not remember what you are taking for granted. You take things for granted a little bit more. So it'll be interesting to see how long it takes people to, um, have that kind of realization wear off a little bit and, and come back to, you know, true reality of like, hustle and bustle and, and grind, grind, grind. Cause I, that, that was, I think another thing is how many people were just like over, I don't even want to say, I don't know if it's necessarily burned out, but just overreached. And I, like, I definitely was like way overreached and everything just kind of shut down. And uh, you know, for me, it was a realization that like I paid way too much attention to sports and I probably need to uninstall my ESPN app on my phone, <laughs> but like that just, uh, you know, taking that away allowed me so much more time to focus on a lot of other things that, that I wanted to focus on more so than, than sports. So um, it'll be interesting to see how long it takes for, for that kind of novelty to wear off and, and people to get back just like on the grind and, and trying to, you know, as a capitalist society does make more and more and more and more and more. So, but yeah, I don't know. You have any thoughts on that or. Um, just uh, so with with the military like being around people but like not really talking to them versus not being around people but being able to virtually talk to them like how do those compare oh yeah that's interesting uh, yeah that's weird i guess i didn't really haven't really thought about that um because i mean there were like there were times when like you you were able to like chat a little bit you know like it's not like you were totally silent silent like the whole 72 hours like and, like we only did training missions so like it wasn't it wasn't like a life or death situation whether you were like whispering or not you know but um yeah the virtual thing is uh is different i mean we know like we get uh endorphin i think it's endorphin dumps when we touch other people's 
like touch gives like a, I'm pretty sure gives endorphin dumps. So like, um, you know, that you're, you're definitely missing out on that component. And then, um, I feel like there's something with facial recognition too, and like seeing people's eyes and like reading people's eyes that, that gives you some sort of, uh, I don't know. It doesn't, it doesn't translate well over technology. Yeah. Yeah. It's like different. It's almost like you, you recognize the person as like, cause there's that, uh, what's the thing where you can like recognize like a robot or like something that isn't human. Like you could put all facial features on it and then you like, but it wouldn't be human and you can recognize that. I can't remember what it's called, but like, hmm. it's almost like you have that over like virtual, uh, virtual contact. If that yeah. makes sense. Logan, did you still have that thought? Um, what was I on? Sorry. Uh, do you remember? Uh, not seeing people. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just not, not being in contact with people and feeling just, like, really unfulfilled because, like, you're not really, especially, you know, as a coach and as an athlete, you're always trying to, like, push the needle forward. Yeah. Um, and then in a time of such, like, limbo, it – it's really tough or it was, you know, and I just had to come to grips with, you know, there, you know, it will get better. You know, there is going to be a competition out there. There's some, someday, hopefully, um, <laughs> and, yeah, no. you know, the thing is like, and, you know, especially with training, um, you know, with me personally, you know, the biggest thing for me was just getting in there and getting my training done and understanding that. Yeah. Right now, you know, might not be done at the intensity that it would be at a gym, but, you know, every single day I'm still um, moving, still doing, you know, my training, still working with my clients. And, you know, there's just going to be times, um, you know, of the year and just in life in general where you're not really going to have the motivation to do what you need to do. Um, so it's just like, you know, you just got to deal with it. And now, like uh, – you know, now personally, like for me, like I feel, you know, a ton better, like training's a lot better, you know, coaching's a lot better, like had a significant, yeah. uh, you know, amount of bounce back. And it was only like a period of like three to four weeks where it was just like, you know, it was oh, really tough. My last and, Logan. You know, I definitely could have let that uh, affect me to the point where, you know, just stop working out completely or something like that. But um, you know, I think just taking it, you know, every day, just get, getting out there and, you know, doing your training, whether you want to or not, uh, definitely ended up paying off because, you know, after all this, there's still going to be competitions and uh, training to do. And, you know, if I just chose to take off, you know, three to four weeks, you know, it'd be hard, a lot harder to bounce back from that. For sure. For sure. Yeah, um, keeping those habits, even when you're not motivated, is is definitely important. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, I think uh, at least it looked like my internet was getting out there, and Logan's been a little spotty today too. So yeah. I think uh, we'll we'll wrap it up here, guys. Um, we'll see you guys in probably another five episodes. So um, what was it about a month and a half? I think is about how long it takes, or two months, something like that. So. We'll, uh, we'll see you guys in another two months. If you guys have any topics that you'd like us to try and discuss or chat about a little bit more, um, feel free to let us know. Uh, we can put out a, another podcast of that. Um, you guys have any th closing thoughts or? No, I mean, just ready to get that, uh, get back after it, after this, uh, after this is all over and I'm curious to see like, you know, who used their time i'm wisely and who just kind of sat around and did nothing yeah <laughs> what you're doing right now reflects yeah for sure six months down for sure uh, if you guys have, don't follow us follow us on instagram uh, we also have a youtube channel we're going to start uh, kind of a new series on that where we commentate um some of our athletes workouts so be on the lookout for that um and then i think this is actually going to be released in the middle of uh kind of a special that we're putting on so um we're running a, a sponsorship so you guys are interested in interested in coaching we're always taking on clients so um give us a shout out we also have um, a couple other programs you guys can uh follow on our website or find on our website so thanks for listening guys until next time